Tay-Sachs disease is one of the most tragic inherited conditions. It first appears in its victims at the age of six months. An apparently healthy, happy baby stops smiling, crawling, and turning over, loses its ability to grasp or reach out, and gradually becomes blind, paralyzed, and unaware of the surrounding world. Death occurs usually by age of three or four years. Tay-Sachs babies are born without a blood chemical that is necessary for breaking down certain fatty acid deposits in brain and nerve cells. The cells soon become clogged, causing the entire nervous system to stop working. Descendants of Central and Eastern European, or Ashkenazi Jews, primarily are affected, although members of any group may inherit the disease. Nearly one out of every 25 American Jews carries the Tay-Sachs gene, which is about 10 times the rate of occurrence in other ethnic groups. What is Tay-Sachs disease? Tay-Sachs disease is a rare metabolic disorder with severe neurologic or nervous system symptoms. Metabolic refers to the body's chemical processes that produce protein and other substances and break down nutrients to release energy. Tay-Sachs disease is a metabolic disorder because it is caused by the absence of an enzyme or a type of protein, hexosomidase A or HEX-A. HEX-A is necessary for breaking down fatty substances called lipids. Without HEX-A, these lipids build up in and eventually destroy the nerve cells in the brain. Ultimately, the nervous system stops functioning properly and the child dies. Tay-Sachs disease is a devastating inherited birth defect that belongs to a group known as storage diseases. An abnormal gene prevents body cells from producing an enzyme or chemical facilitator that normally helps break down specific chemical compounds. These compounds then get stored in cells, damaging or destroying them. In Tay-Sachs disease, fatty molecules, known as lipids, accumulate in cells of the central nervous system and gradually, but inevitably, stop them from working. There are some alternate forms of Tay-Sachs disease. There are actually two forms. Um, there is classical Tay-Sachs, which is the one that we've mainly been talking about. Classical Tay-Sachs occurs in children, um, uh, infants in particular. Uh, it begins during pregnancy, and most children who are affected by classical Tay-Sachs die between the ages of two and five. Classical Tay-Sachs is, ca is caused by a complete lack of the enzyme HEX-A, which is used to break down the fatty acids, which will build up in the nervous system and eventually cause its deterioration. The second form of uh, Tay-Sachs is called late onset Tay-Sachs, which occurs in teenagers and adults. Um, they do not have a complete lack of HEX-A, but they do have um, lower levels of it. Uh, and this causes them to be moody, they're clumsy, they're uncoordinated, um, they, they experience muscle weakness, twitching, slurred speech, intellectual impairment, and um, actually very similar symptoms to those of uh, classical Tay-Sachs. Um, they are, these diseases are very similar, um, besides that one is fatal, the other is not. So, what is your name? Uh, Terrence Smith. And what is your daughter's name? Sally. How old is she? She's about three and a half. And what have you been noticing about her lately? She's had, uh, reduced mobility. She hasn't... She's, she used to be able to crawl around, but she's just been lying on her back recently. Mm -hmm. uh, have you tried to play with her? Can she reach out and touch you? No, she j she's unresponsive. Mm -hmm. Has she been able to read? Is she having any trouble with her eyes? or? I, I don't know. She, she hadn't learned how to read yet. Or... Mm. And uh, so what, what are we going to be trying to, to do here then? Are we gonna... I, I just want to find out what's the matter with my daughter because I'm very worried about her. Okay. All right, well, uh, let's go see uh, Dr. Dave then. Will do. Come on in. Dr. Dave. Mr. Smith. Call me Terrence. Oh, all right. So what is the current status of your daughter? Well, she's had uh, really reduced mobility, and she's just lying on her back. She's not even crawling around anymore. Well, this is a sign of numerous diseases. Um, Have you noticed any, like cherry red spots in her eyes? Actually, actually, I did right right on her uh, retina. 
Hmm. Well, that's actually a sign of Tay-Sachs disease. So, uh, what exactly is Tay-Sachs disease? Well, Tay-Sachs disease is, is a disease that basically <coughs> shuts down the nervous system. How, do, how, do, like, how does it do that? What, what, what's going to happen? What can we do? Well, this abnormal gene from the disease actually stops the production of an enzyme that basically helps clearing up the cells that actually <coughs> shuts down the central nervous system. How did how, look? How, I don't understand. How does it do that? What what causes the nervous system to shut down? Well, this gene actually stops the production of an enzyme, and this enzyme that stops the production of it basically keeps the cells clear of fatty acids. Now, what is what is the purpose of this enzyme? Like, what 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 exactly does the enzyme? What is an enzyme? Well, it keeps the cells clear, and if you don't have this, the production of this enzyme. Over time, the cells will clog up, and the body systems will shut down. Oh, so what what can we do about this? Can we help my daughter? I I'm very I'm very concerned about her health and safety. Well, before we take any action, I have to make sure that this is the actual disease that is the problem. So maybe we should go into the files and check if both you and your wife are carriers. Okay, why don't why don't you do that? So are you by any chance of Jewish descent? Actually, my parents were were Jewish. Uh, well, according to my records, both you and your wife are carriers of the Tay-Sachs gene. What does it mean to be a carrier? A carrier is an organism that carries a dangerous trait, but in a recessive form. This recessive trait is covered up by a dominant trait. In the case of Tay-Sachs disease, these two carrier parents when mated, and they pass on their genes. In the case of the homozygous recessive offspring, um, the, the gene will code for um, a lack of production of the enzyme HEX-A. This which will uh, no longer deplete the fatty acids that are building up in the central nervous system. Because of this, the nervous system will eventually stop functioning and shut down. When two carriers meet, they produce offspring with a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. This means one normal, two carriers, and one offspring with homozygous recessive genes. This means that the offspring have a 25% chance of being homozygous recessive, which means that that offspring will carry the recessive traits which are usually undesirable. So, are there any cures? Well, researcher, researchers are actively trying to find a cure for Tay-Sachs, but as of now, all you can do is come for your child. What happened with your meeting with Dr. Dave? Well, I, 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 I've learned that my daughter is uh, terminally ill, and I'm gonna, I'm, I've got a little bit of mice, so I'm gonna see what I can do to advance the research aspect of this disease. Why are you going to be trying to advance the research here? Because now that I actually have a loved one who's personally affected, I think that it's necessary to try to find a cure for this, try to try to stop this from happening to other parents. Seems moral. Oh, hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Terrence Smith. Hi, my name is Professor Davis. I'm the head of research and development uh, at the National Institute for Terminally Ill Children. Can I help you? Um, yeah, uh, I need, I, I feel it's very important for research to be done concerning Tay-Sachs. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter was recently diagnosed and oh, I'm very so sorry I to hear that. feel that it would be a great help to humanity to try to get rid of this syndrome or at least find mm -hmm. a cure. So yes, we are working very diligently on that now.
here's some monetary backing to uh, well, help Well, thank you, you out. very much. We will accept this gratefully. I appreciate it. And I, I wish the best for your daughter and the rest of your family. I, I hope that you will find, do your hardest, try your hardest to find some We, we will help. do our best, sir. We hope the best. Thank you. Thank you. Roughly about 21 years ago, we had our first child, which was our daughter. After a few months, we could see that something was not quite right. I brought her in for tests, and, and then he came to me and he told me that she had a genetic brain disease called Tay-Sachs. And the lifespan was around three years old. I remember we just stood there. We were crying. My parents came and to see our little girl, so lovely, so beautiful, just, just lying there. We tried to find out as much information as we could, but there wasn't much available. No, there wasn't much at all. Not like there is today. And we tried. We had all the equipment at home, a sucking machine and, and, and everything. We used to have to tube feed Deborah. But it's your flesh and blood, so you do it. It's upsetting. It's very upsetting. Because at the time Deborah died, I was pregnant again. And I didn't think it would happen again, but unfortunately it did. We had a little son, and it was the same thing. But he deteriorated much quicker than her. He ended up in hospital. I can only say, with this video being made, we went through six years of hell. Believe you me. That's why people should come forward today and have that blood test. Well, I would think that every young Jewish person should get tested. Um, when Tom and I <laughs> decided to start a family, I had a Tay-Sachs test done and I discovered that I was positive. Um, and then my test turned out to be negative, so there was absolutely no problem in terms of conceiving and the possibility of um, they're being Tay-Sachs. The main thing to do, I guess, is uh, then to get your partner tested straight away. Tay-Sachs disease usually affects Louisiana Cajuns and French Canadians in addition to the Jews. In the United States, about 1 in 25 Jews and Cajuns carry the gene as compared to 1 in 250 in the rest of the general population. Among the first symptoms are a slowing of development, loss of vision, abnormal startle response, and convulsions. A newborn may seem normal for about the first six months, but then, all of a sudden, they stop smiling, reaching out, and grasping objects, and they become unable to crawl. After six months, a characteristic cherry red spot can be observed on the retina of affected children. Blood tests can identify carrier parents and affected fetuses. If the results of the enzyme measurement are unclear, it is possible to see specific mutations by DNA analysis. DNA analysis can also help identify much rarer forms of the condition that appear somewhat later in life but have the same devastating consequences. The level of the normal enzyme can be measured in parental blood from fetal cells collected by amniocentesis or chronic villi sampling, CVS. A fetus with a genetic defect will have no sign of the enzyme. An adult with an intermediate level of the enzyme is likely to be a carrier. Tay-Sachs disease is inherited as an autosomal recessive trait. Autosomal means that it's not a sex-linked characteristic. Parents pass 22 autosomal chromosomes to their children. Due to a deficiency of the enzyme hexosaminidase A, hex A, there is an accumulation of GM2 gangliocide, a fatty substance 
in nerve cells of the brain. Tay-Sachs disease is named for Warren Tay, a British ophthalmologist who was born in 1843 and died in 1927. The disease is also named for Bernard Sachs, born in 1858, died in 1944. He was a New York neurologist.